Oh, hi, happy Mother's Day. Um, I'm Adam Puckle, welcome to the cafe. We decided to do something a little bit different than our normal videos. Um, and I know this is probably my 8,000th take on, on trying to do something uh, very special for everybody, but we still want to do it that we're emphasizing a, a, cool, a cool concept, which is showcasing a wine dinner at home. And uh, normally what we do is we would invite guests here to the restaurant and have uh, three or four different wines where we would take them and pair them uh, with different types of food that we were able to come up with or, you know, desserts or what have you. Um, so uh, I guess I guess a good example of that would be if you were to take like a roasted lamb and be very, very good with Merlot. Or let's say that you have an appetizer and you're trying to do like a bruschetta. It would be very good with the Merlot. Or, you know, even for a dessert, we could do something as classic as Bananas Fosters. And it'd probably be fantastic with the Merlot. Anyway, we decided to kind of turn that on its head. And because I'm not able to focus on four different wines, we decided to do one wine and showcase the strengths of that wine along with our culinary expertise. So we decided to take one wine, which is from the Rune Winery, and show how three different dishes can pair very well with the wine itself. So even if you kind of like are a snob, you can go out and be like, hey, we can do this one wine, and then you're like, oh, we can do it with different things. Oh, and I mean, it was a snob. Ah, that's mean for me to say. I apologize. I'm awkward. Who knows? Anyway, so what we do is we're going to start very simply by showcasing uh, the wine we're using, oh, thank you. Uh, which is James Callaghan's, um, who's the owner of Rune, his 2018 Rosé. I've already got a glass poured. So it's a classic thing. I always look for a color. You can see that it has this very lovely uh, red wine, uh, red kind of white mixture. Nothing like over the top. And it's, it's great. Man, honestly, beautiful color. Um, second that, normally people swirl it to check the legs. Uh, it's not necessary. Normally how I see the legs is to identify how much alcohol is in the wine, how much heat's going to be coming off of it. This is only about a 13% wine. So the legs are going to run slow. Okay, smell. It's very floral. Uh, get a touch of strawberry, relatively fruity, a little hint of honey at the back end, and then taste. Now, a lot of people like to suck in a little bit more air, so you hear people slurping wine. That's not a bad thing. It's just to showcase um, how to incorporate more oxygen and really emphasize the different flavors that you're able to get. So I get a little bit more of an apple, oddly enough, coming from the wine itself. So, to start off simply, uh, we decided to start with just a simple caprese salad. And like I said, we've done this a couple of times for showing, but I don't want to lie to anybody. It's still a lovely salad. It's simple, fresh basil. We did a roasted tomato, mozzarella that's been shredded, and we reduce down the balsamic as it's dressing. So we'll taste it. That was really good. <laughs> Sorry. So the fresh basil itself really stands out, obviously. Um, the roasted tomatoes are made with Roma, so they're gonna be extra sweet. Uh, the fresh mozzarella adds the, the fat to it to make it so not only do the tomatoes really stand out, but the wine's gonna stand out as well. And then you have the balsamic coming in 
in order to put essentially an exclamation part at the, at the end of the dish. And a classic thing that I've always taught people, or when any time that I have to describe food to people is, you always do a sip, taste sip. And so you can see how the wine changes between each dish. So you have the tomato, and you have the balsamic, and there's that extra sweetness. Then you have the fat metals that are sticking around in your mouth. And it makes it so that the wine tastes a little bit more bold, and a little bit more bitter, but that's not a bad thing, because it still stresses like how versatile this wine actually is. So from there, we'll go on. And I've already taken a bite out of this. I know, I'm practicing. <laughs> this is a, uh, Chili lime salmon taco with a pineapple, green apple, uh, fresh red onion, garlic, cilantro type of pico de gallo. We did a light spread of mayonnaise, uh, pretty much for the same reason of why we did the mozzarella and the the salad before. So I wanted to make sure that uh, it kind of it, it flows with you get the best out of it. So, a little taste. I mean to talk about how good my own products are, but still, damn, that's good. Anyway, the fattiness of the salmon really, really blends well with, with the fruitiness of the wine itself. So let's get that last taste in. Oh my goodness. It really brings out, it really brings out that strawberry and, oh, that's good. So you're taking from a tropical element, which is pineapples, apples, and then the heat from the red peppers, or sorry, I apologize, uh, the red onions, makes it so the wine itself, it kind of plays with you a bit, where it, 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 it comes in strong with a strawberry flavor, and then it starts dancing with the other flavors that come in from the taco itself. So the fattiness makes it so the strawberry flavor starts to standing out, and then it goes into the heat of that. Uh, it goes into the heat of the onion, and then it goes into an extra sweetness coming from the pineapple and the apple itself. And so you're kind of on a roller coaster ride, or your, your taste buds are on a roller coaster ride, and that that is very interesting. It's very good, and uh, just oh, my goodness. And I, I, I understand that may, maybe you may not be able to. Um, get such a wine or you might have a different rosé at home but um, if you really want to buy James's rosé you can always get, go to his winery and he's always coming up with just some of the best wines that I, I have had in the area and everybody out here does amazing stuff but I, I do prefer a lot of his stuff over everything else finally as simple as it is, and we probably should have done this for Easter. However, we made a carrot cake. Cupcake. And I'm not sure why. I, I think when I originally wrote this menu, it was because I th we, had, we had the funniest conversation of like, oh, kept on going to si back to cinnamon or like nutmeg, and it just kept on going to these like heavy, heavy spices. And I was like, how can we make this work? So I guess the guy got stuck in my head. I was like, oh, we can get this. Oh, we can get this. But I honestly had the chance to sit down and think about it. And I was like, you know what? I think this actually will work. So there's three different different styles of pairings, which is you make it so one pair is that you go the complete opposite of what the wine is supposed to be. Second pair is you flow with the wine. So think of it like music. So you're going with treble bass. 
And the third one is you have it so you have a classic wave and then you have dubstep. <laughs> and it oddly works. So it's really nice. Just did like a simple carrot on top in order to do it. My hands get messy. I'm very, very bad with cupcakes. And personally, I don't like desserts too much, but you know what? I, I was like, my mom put in a lot of energy to do this. And I can taste a touch of ginger in there as well, which is a nice surprise. <laughs> Even off just like a little lick of my finger. So taste, taste. Yep, so good. A touch of honey on the back end, which is perfect for a dessert. I know a lot of people wonder how I eat with a beard. Um, unsuccessfully, most of the time. That is very good, though. So, the heavy amount of different spices coming from the cupcake really overpowers the one. And that's not a bad thing. It makes it so you have something that's so, so delicate going into something that's so strong, and that's why you taste, taste, taste. So there's always a three. You follow the three rule. And now we do it again. And it completely changes. So I'm getting a lot more bitterness. I'm getting a lot more of these strong fruit flavors. Uh, such as pear, or as I was getting with the taco, because of the high amount of fat in it, of green apple. And that's the entire point of doing a white taste, is you're seeing what works, you're seeing what doesn't, and it's a beautiful blend of everything. And in all honesty, I'm very happy with the choices that we made with this. And I know that not everybody's going to enjoy it, and I'm not, I, I understand that not everybody's going to have a firm understanding of why I do what I do, but that's okay. That's what we make this videos for. So, I appreciate you spending the time with me. I know that this has probably been about 15, 10, I don't know how long I've been rambling on for. But I, I've had a lot of fun, and I appreciate that you've stuck with me through this entire time, and I hope that you've learned something and gotten a little bit deeper into my mind of how things are supposed to work. So have a good Mother's Day and thank you.